You are listening to The Unglamorous Life. I'm Lauren. And I'm Celeste. And this has been a hilarious uh, morning. morning. Yeah, it's uh, Saturday. Our life is a joke. <laughs> is today Saturday? Yeah, yeah, right? It's Saturday morning. Fuck. Um, we had really big plans for this morning. We and did. Like, but you know what? We, we worked out. We ran. And now we're already sore after like two hours. And um, we just did this like little work out outside because we got we woke up too late to go to the gym and ugh, we're trying to get podcasts anyways so it all rolls into like what we want to talk about right now which is um something i kind of coined and i've talked about it before i'm pretty sure um something called the oh shit method we also have alzheimer's so we can't remember <laughs> we talk about this or not. oh man uh yeah so this is something that i really want to talk about because i feel like some of the really most pivotal shit in my life has happened to me through these oh shit moments where you're forced to uh, really like do shit and um, whether it's most of it's professional but where you're these moments where things happen to you and you're put in a position where you're forced to act and react and um, those are the moments you grow the most most (laughs) (laughs) and I'm also laughing because I can hear my dog Simon snorting Um, he's snoring or snorting under the table that's distracting uh but i know we've both had those moments in our lives everyone has but i think this year for me has been super full of them and i know uh you kind of went through that when you started your business yeah so a few years ago when i was an undergrad i was kind of like most people like i was in school and i didn't really know exactly what i wanted to do i was just like knew that i enjoyed school and i was just kind of there learning such a dork i know i'm such a fucking dork uh (laughs) And so at that point I had hired uh, a coach and I had started getting like more serious about competing. And then one of my friends was like, Oh, can you be my coach? And I was like, you mean you'll pay me and I'll like, coach you <laughs> like how my coach does that. And she's like, yeah, I was like, okay. I was just like, <laughs> just looking at her. Sure? You're like, are you punking me? Yeah. I was like, are you, are you sure? And she was like, yeah. So, it really like started there. Obviously at that point, like I said, I, I had hired a coach and I, you know, kind of just started that whole journey. So before that I had literally no concept of like coaching relationship, business, any, like no business, anything. Um, and I was just kind of like, all right, I guess we'll start. And, uh, like, obviously I didn't know fucking, I knew what to do kind of as far as like a coach, but the whole business aspect of it and the whole like mm-hmm. talking to clients having things organized like having a business like that was so over my head so obviously it started very small like i had just her for a while and then it was like one of her friends and then i came home for the summer and had like a few people at the gym you know working yeah. with me and stuff and it was all still like online but it was like so much different than it is now like thinking back to it it's just like really funny like how i've like developed that um but that's literally how i started well there's so, th- i mean there's moments where you can look back and be like how did i even i lo- I, lo- I don't even know how. yeah <laughs> i know i like what? when especially when you're facing a challenge you're like okay you look back and you're like well i did this so this new challenge shouldn't be shit for me because i was able to do xyz and then i also love being able to like lay my head down at night and say how the fuck did i pull that off um that's like such a cool feeling it's like <laughs> ages you dramatically but it's it's such a cool feeling to be able to feel that accomplished especially like just in a day like the small victories in a day so yeah it was definitely really cool to be able to have that like thank god for Lisette, you know because otherwise i, I don't know if i would have started that you know like mm-hmm. and i mean maybe eventually i would have just because i became friends with other coaches and stuff but like that i had zero confidence that i should be doing that and Obviously, like I was, you know, it was very small starting out. So it's not like I was like giving out recommendations to hundreds of people when I didn't know anything, Um, like (laughs) which some people do. (laughs) Uh, So it was just like really it was I'm really happy that it started that way and it started really small and I could just kind of figure out things as I went. And then literally every few months, I just kind of kept revamping things. And I still do that now. Like every I'm trying to like always refine the process on like both ends, you know, like what's going to be the best for the client, what's going to be the best for me. And because when you're working with one-on-one clients, everything's based on like how I can respond, right? And like, can I give you the best attention, you know? And everybody has different styles that work for them. So I'm always constantly trying to evolve that so I can give my best to the client, you know, like for what they're paying for. And a lot of that, for me at least, comes down to like when I'm working 
and like when my brain capacity is the best and like uh and there's just like different things you know like you figure out as you go along but like when i started i literally had no concept of any of that it was just like okay i guess here we go send me a check-in in a week and like send me an email on how you're doing and, please and, yeah <laughs> please and i like i look back and like Rai still has like my old computer that i had in undergrad um like he'll like do like programs and stuff on it and like we'll find like randomly like old stuff on there and it's like the first program i ever wrote and it's like terrible uh, or it's just like it, it's, like, it's just not what it is now like like makes sense yeah, yeah. just like oh my gosh like <laughs> or like how it's laid out and it's just like really funny like looking back at that kind of stuff and so yeah that literally that's how i got started on like my career yeah just like somebody saying hey i want you to do this for me and really not like i was like all right like i guess I'll go for it and yeah. just figured it out. And now that's what I do full time. And, and that's your business. And that's how you uh, eat and like pay for things. So that's and I eat a lot. So <laughs> <laughs> she does. And that's actually really cool. So um, I feel like a lot of things in my life have happened in, in that way, you know, starting from well, this year has been just like a monstrosity of stress and like just, oh shit m moments and things that happened. But I will say that before I had my business and all this, um, in wrestling, uh, when I wrestled for WWE, I, all of the really cool shit that happened to me was, um, out of a moment of like a fuck up or something that went wrong and then had to be fixed. So for instance, I won, um, a battle Royal live on raw on accident The the spot got messed up and I wasn't supposed to win. It was a battle Royal for the number one contender for the title. And I wasn't really in the storyline and I was just happened to be the second to the last one in the ring and I was supposed to be eliminated. Um, and there was a, a mess up and I basically, uh, close with the spot was where I was supposed to clothesline the number one contender who was supposed to win over and she was supposed to hang on and pull me out. Um, so I clotheslined her. She didn't go over. So she's like, hit me again. So I clothesline her. I hit the fuck out of her. She. I hit her so hard that she flipped over and couldn't hold on and she eliminated herself. And so I sat there on live TV winning a battle world that I wasn't supposed to because it wasn't part of the storyline. And I, it was, you, if you ever watch back it, like watch back, you can see the sheer like terror in my face and it was like televised and it's like on the internet forever now. But, um, anyways, so that when I went backstage, I was terrified because I was like, well, I fucked up. Um, this wasn't part of the storyline. Now writers are going to have to rewrite stuff and like all these things. And it ended up be thrusting me into a storyline and I wasn't really ready. And I was like, okay, fuck it. This is my chance. And it happened. And now this is how, and th that's actually the road to how I won the title. So stuff like that is my favorite because shit just happens and it forces you to step up and I don't know, be like a better version of yourself. So I kind of always think back at stuff like that when something happens to me that's it's like really pivotal. Yeah. Like it basically changes like you go either way. Yeah. Like you, what we always talk about. And like that's what I think happened this year a lot to you was <laughs> things could have gone either really good right. like they have or could have gone like really fucking bad. I've, I know, I've found that I thrive under pressure even though like I hate because like I, I get panicky and stress and like all those things but I thrive under pressure. And um, so for anyone who doesn't know, I had a really crazy year. I, had, I got a divorce this year. Um, I lost a ton of, I lost all my employees basically and had to restructure my business in the beginning of the year. I had a, I didn't even have a warehouse. I had to ship out of um, an employee's house for like two months. I didn't have a place to live. And I was like sleeping on my mom's couch until I could get my shit together. And then, so I was in this, oh shit mode for like, literally this almost this entire year and finally everything kind of stabilized and through that i learned i were okay so i had to be i was literally in charge for not only okay so i wasn't married anymore i didn't have that support system it was just just me okay now i'm running this business myself uh because my ex-husband was involved in it and so now it's just me and now i have these new employees and now i have to establish like these roles and these lines and how the business is going to function and like all that so once it got stabilized, um, I was able to like breathe a little bit and, um, you have actually been involved in this entire year and literally like <laughs> January 1st. Yeah. And every year, like literally last year, like remember it was like the very, yeah. was, like right before new year's. It was the beginning of the end, uh, for my marriage at least. Um, so you've been, you know, like you've been involved in, a, and it's 
there's a lot of things that we would never talk about, but shit, we went through some real shit this year. And, um, I, once I kind of went through this big phase of like, Oh, the panic. Oh fuck. What am I going to do? How am I going to run the business myself? Okay. From that to getting new employees that I trusted and we, you know, rebuilt everything and, um, the, the company was doing well. Uh, and then we had another bump in the road where, uh, this is extremely recent, like two weeks ago where I lost two of my core employees, like with no notice and it fucked me. Um, or I didn't let it, 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 I didn't let it. Um, I was in panic mode for a couple days, but because I had gone through so much this year, I was like, honestly, like what else can happen? Come on, 2017. Anyways. Uh, so that was another like, oh shit moment that forced me to get my shit together. Okay, here's my plan. What am I going to do? Let me, I have to put new people in new places. I have to strategize how I'm going to handle and take on all this extra stress. And you know, it's, it was right before Christmas and I have to ship out all these packages and stuff. So it was a, a, a literal entire year full of oh shit moments. But now I would say like everything's probably like setting you setting you up better for like next year as far as yeah, I'm like, please God, next year. <laughs> <laughs> oh man. <laughs> no, but I think honestly, like the little bit that I do know about, like obviously cause our businesses are so different, you know, like structurally, but I think that you're in a better place now to grow for next year. And like, you've aligned yourself with like the right people right. and like everything is structured how you want it to be for the most part. I would say like, yeah. it's not like out of your control. And you can, you know, like, I'm really excited for, like, how everything is, like, lined up now, even though there's been multiple bumps in the road. Yeah. Uh, it's been, like, it's been really cool to, well, it sucked to be the part of everything, <laughs> like, for those, like, really shitty months. Um, but through all those ups and downs, like, I think now, finally, things have, like, stabilized and, like, are definitely on the up. Yeah. And like, it's basically it's just setting up for 2018 to, and I hate being that person. I'm like, oh, you know, new year, new me, like that stuff's so dumb, but legit this year was like so crazy that <laughs> I'm like, just like, love of Christ, I could not be the same me in 2017, 2018. <laughs> Please let me be somebody else. Uh, no. Even this podcast too. Like yeah. we don't know what the fuck we're doing. No. Uh, we're still figuring it out. Uh, we can't even figure out how to have batteries. So for fucking podcast. We, the, so the, we have a zoom recorder and we hook up our mics to it and like that's how we record our podcast and it requires double a batteries and i'm not a person so like i don't have extra batteries that's out of shit i don't have anything in my house i'm such Besides a makeup i'm such a bachelor yeah oh i just have makeup because i have to like put it it's just i have to be concerned about what i look like um which i if you saw me right now you would laugh at that statement but uh anyways so there's no batteries and i'm like shit because we recorded two last night and the battery started was dead we recorded like four we recorded four and we are only going to use two <laughs> um from last night but uh so the battery died and i was like oh shit well i have double a's in my remote downstairs so went down put in those batteries those were almost dead we got a little bit of juice out of that and i was like okay shit let me go get the batteries out of my um my bedroom remote so we put those in only got a little bit of life out of those and then so right now we're trying to record a podcast th this morning and we have a schedule today we're on a tight schedule you got a family thing tonight i'm attending it of course <laughs> um so we had to like wash our hair and do all these things and get this podcast done and the battery was dead so i was like oh my god there's no more batteries in this house and so i was like no no i have a solution and so i literally we are able to record this podcast right now because I pulled uh, two double A's out of a vibrator <laughs> <laughs> and put it in the Zoom recorder, and that is how this is possible right now. So, so if that doesn't sum up our <laughs> podcast, like life and <laughs> lack of ability <laughs> to, to be real people. Um, and so, like for both of us, I feel like if we. We like definitely will overthink stuff, right? Mm -hmm. And like we could probably record like a hundred podcasts and like like three of them, right? Um, and like spend this time like figuring out like more shit, but we're just like kind of getting it going, and like we've we just like have delved right into it. Yeah, and I don't think either of us is letting like we're not just gonna like let that like hold us back, and we know that like the beginning ones like we're gonna like figure out like as we go along, and it's definitely been like a funny slash fun slash rough <laughs> beginning for the podcast because yeah. we've had like so many like times we've recorded stuff and it like either doesn't work out or like whatever. Yeah. So kind of like, or we hate our own voice or like, why did we say always. that? <laughs> yeah. 
or we don't have batteries or and we don't live in the same area so we have to like kind of figure all that out so there's Mm -hmm. just like a bunch of shit that we're constantly working on and like if we would let that hold us back we wouldn't even do the podcast but right. we're like fuck it let's just do it and figure it out as we go yeah i'm like what weekend are you not do you not have a million things going because if you guys don't know lauren does um she travels a lot for like her job but she does speaking engagements and uh seminars and like all those things and so her schedule's legit crazier than mine and i'm like okay so when are you not doing shit so we can re- so we can get together because we could always do the podcast over Skype or whatever but it's just so much so better much in better. person like as far as like chemistry goes and like of course we have fun and we fuck around and but that's what I you know that's what makes it what it is so uh, it takes us like 36 hours to do like three <laughs> like 30 minutes <laughs> and, and like 10 batteries yeah it's the worst uh, but I, I just think that it both of us have really realized and um, embraced the unknown and the, the like, oh shit moments and just kind of the constant, oh shit pressure that we have on us owning a business and trying to do all these other products, uh, products, projects like, um, podcasts. And like, I've, you know, I started this vlog and, I, I just, there's so many things going on and, you know, all the, the speaking engagements and things that I know that, you know, I'm trying to do and that you do. And it's, it's, it's literally, you can just take it one day at a time and like, that's all you can do because something is always going to pop up that's urgent or sad or something that will, ch- you know, change you in some way. And you just have to be receptive to it and not be a victim, I think is the. Yeah, it's really easy to get, I like I myself get like super overwhelmed when I start like overthinking stuff. And that's just like my immediate like response, like normally. And I'll just get very like just overwhelmed and like want to like shut down, Mm -hmm. you know, when there's stuff like that. And what I, I mean, I'm still learning all this too, because it's very hard because there's no direct, when you have any kind of business or personal brand or whatever, like there's no direction. There's no like, you know, unless you hire somebody to like take control of things and tell you what to do, you're basically running the show. Mm -hmm. It's like all on your time, your own thoughts. And that can be very overwhelming. Yeah. Um, if you don't have like a system in place or like you're for both of us, I know probably the worst thing is like, we always have like 200 ideas going on Mm -hmm. and like, we want to like do all of them. (laughs) And then we do like that can like cripple you to do like none of them. Yeah. You're like, Oh fuck it. Like I, you know, I'm super overwhelmed. It could just make you lie in the fetal position and rock back and forth. (laughs) and or like take a nap (laughs) it's like like, there's like a meme do you ever have so much to do that you just lie down and take a nap (laughs) yes so that can be that's just like the reality of like trying to do stuff like on your own um and getting uncomfortable and growing so it's just something that like we both have to work on and like harness yeah we have all these ideas and we have all these things we want to do and just being able to just like consolidate them and actually just like fucking do it and like make it logical yeah so taking the first steps of like doing things even if they're not perfect you know maybe like a podcast or like starting a business or or whatever you want to fucking do Dude, there, there, really what you there was a there was a world star posted it and i reposted it uh i love world star <laughs> i was on instagram and they posted um actually christina who works for social bodies she sent it to me because she's also been super involved in all the shit that has had the shit storm that has been this year. And she has really stepped up by the way, but she's amazing and super loyal. And anyway, so she sent me this world star meme and I reposted it on my Insta story. And it was like something like, um, Hey, you know, that podcast start it. Hey, you know, that idea, uh, put it into action or like, it was all these things like, Hey, you know, this thing that's in the back of your mind, just fucking do it. And I felt like that's been my year because um, I've had a lot of ideas and things that I've wanted to put into action and I've just done it. And this is, this is straight up just been my year, even though it's been crazy shitty, it's been also just super fucking pivotal, dude. So I feel like that is, um, like a really good summary of the course of events that have taken place. You know, it's like, Hey, you know, this thing, do it. Uh, this idea, you know, make it happen this business start it oh you know all those all that stuff and um you know the, yeah for sure the podcast is definitely a good example of it and this will <laughs> who knows what's going to happen with the podcast like how it'll develop and um what it'll turn into but i think that uh we don't even know so that's 
And we're not going to know because all this stuff is like always changing too, mm-hmm. which is part of the weird thing with like businesses and personal brands and stuff like podcasts and whatever, because they're literally always changing. Like right now, my main income is coaching, you know, like online coaching and doing that. But that could change, like, the industry is always changing. And, like, there's always going to be a place for that. But, like, there's also other things that are going to, like, just happen and mm-hmm. evolve. And you have to be, like, up to date with all that and not constantly, you know, like, oh, I used to do this. And, like, this is how I want to do things. Or, like, oh, I did that for 10 years and, like, whatever. And, like, if you're in this kind of an industry, like, it's just not going to happen. Like, if it's anything, like, related with, like, internet <laughs> like it's just always the interweb <laughs> like the <worldwide laughs> web. Uh, it's like always just changing and like it's a lot of people get stuck like that and they're like oh i used to do this and i still do it this way or like um because I, cha- I put in my work this many years ago i'm just gonna you know i deserve this and it's like no no, no there's new people like literally every day yeah. there's like bigger better smarter well, you know, cha- faster people all the time so well th- change is uncomfortable and it's hard but you're right there's always someone smarter, younger, prettier, uh, hungrier, you know, than you. And you always have to be aware of that. So if you're not constantly growing and evolving, then fuck off. Like, you know, that's it. Like if you're, if you're not willing to grow and change and accept new things and learn new things, then you're totally screwed. Um, and I think that's sometimes like how people end up. And I'm not saying this is a bad thing, but and I think it's more of like an old school thing where, you know, say your parents, oh, well, my dad has been in with this same company for 30 years and he's only done this. And, you know, there's situations like that. But um, I, I feel like and maybe you've, you, you have grown in that position and you've gotten promotions or moved yeah, ahead in the company and stuff. Then yeah. Awesome. But I feel like if you don't you take steps outside of your comfort zone, then you'll never get as far as you, you know, could get potentially if you took those risks and took those moments that are like super scary, whether they're good opportunities or it's something bad that happens to you and used it to evolve and, you know, be better for it, then you're, you're doing it. you don't your- have to be like irrational either. I think a lot of people will give advice like, oh, just do whatever. And it's like, okay, <laughs> not, that's like not really fucking sound. <laughs> Uh, you have to have like some kind of skills. You have to have some work ethic. You have to have, you know, and if you already have something going on, that's like good, but you want to like change it. You can always do things like on the side and then continue to kind of like progress. And like, there's just, there has to be like with really fucking anything that we're ever going to talk about. Like there's always like a middle ground, Mm -hmm. right? So you have to be somebody who's like willing to like put your balls in the line, work your face off, do whatever, be adventurous. But you also have to like, be smart too yeah and don't just think that like oh just because i want something to happen and this i'm passionate about butterflies like or pillows or what i'm looking at some shit on the which actually i would totally get into a stuffed animal business because i love stuffed animals so <laughs> new business venture 2018 <laughs> um but you can't just be like oh i like that and then just like sit on it and not do anything right so i think a lot of people will like feel like they have a quote-unquote passion for something and then they'll be like, oh, it'll just like happen. And like, that's yeah. Terrible advice also. Um, so there has to be kind of like that in between. You have to try to be an adult also. And like. Adulting is hard, but <laughs> we advise it. So. <laughs> As we're not really adults, but we're, hey, we're trying. We're trucking. Keep on trucking. Uh, but no, I guess that is. That's the oh shit method. And definitely unglamorous but if you follow through with whatever it is and you're willing to put in the work for it you're gonna get whatever you want out of it and that could be like a personal thing or a new business venture or you know anything any a new stuffed animal company which you'll be seeing from lauren in 2018 (laughs) thanks for listening guys Okay, guys, so we want to hear from you. We want to hear about your oh shit moments and what your oh shit method was. What did you do to overcome something super pivotal that happened to you? And how did you use it as uh, fuel, basically, to excel? And how did you get through it? We want to hear your cool stories. And we want to talk about it on one of our next podcasts. So everybody has a really awesome story. And it's just we like interacting with people and like hearing shit like that. Cause that's really, I mean, it's inspiring to us. Mm-hmm. And like, we 
obviously want to hear about how you guys are like improving yourselves and like it's just cool as shit yeah uh, that's like the best part about like meeting people to me like when we go to like events and stuff is like hearing stuff like that right but since we can't meet everyone you can send in an email or you can comment on one of our latest instagram posts yeah. when we post about this, this particular podcast so if you've listened uh send us a message and we want to hear about it and we'll talk about it on one of the next podcasts boom Thank you for listening to The Unglamorous Life. Please subscribe to the podcast and leave us any feedback. Go to celestialbodies.com and laurenconlin.com. And remember, life is unglamorous. Unglamorous.